My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will talk about how to install the Re framework from UiPath and we will give a quick overview of the functions in it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. First, we will head to Google. We will search for UiPath Re framework like this. And then we will choose the link with the GitHub UiPath. That's the official UiPath GitHub. We can see the files to the Re framework is here. We could either just download them and manually open it. However, the most easy thing is just to copy the address up here in the address line, then go to UiPath, click on Team, Clone Repository, like this. Then we will paste in the repository URL here, and we can see that the checkout directory, that's the place where we place our uh, UiPath Re framework. That will be this directory, that's good. And just click Open. It will now open up the Re framework from UiPath. This says that we got an older, uh, the project was created in an older version of the studio, and um, an automatic migration will be performed. That's good. Continue. Now the files are loading. We will have to wait a bit. And now it's loaded. We can see that we got some unresolved issue here, issues here with the dependencies, and we can easily resolve them by just right clicking and then click repair uh, dependency like this then click I accept wait a bit now that works and then the other uh, red one right click then repair click accept again Now we got a fresh install installment of UiPath Re framework. We can go to the open main workflow here. And we got the uh, Re framework installed and opened. Here we can see the Re framework um, state. And uh, so we'll just uh, close this one down, auto hide, and then we got uh, a better view of it. We can scroll a little bit down. So the um, intuition behind the Re framework is that we start here at start, then we go to init, initialization, and um, here we will load uh, all the programs that we'll be using. We will uh, load credentials assets, we will uh, create a queue from some data, and when we're done uh, with this, we will go to Either we could uh, have an error, like say that it uh, won't open the program or we can't create the queue. Then we will have a system error and we'll just end the process all over here and close all applications and of course lock an error message. Otherwise we can have a successful initializ initialization and we will go down here, get the transaction data. That will be that we get it from the queue. Um, we can either have uh, no data then we'll just end the process over here and again lock. This re framework come with an extensive uh, logging, so uh, it will lock everything. Otherwise, if we have some data, we will uh, process one transaction at a time. And we can have uh, three outcomes of this process transaction. We can either have a, it actually says here, if we can have a success, a business rule exception, and the system error. Um, if we um, we either we if we have a success, we will just uh, we can see here. Let me um, let me drag. Uh, let me find the success. It will be here. Um, or let me actually go back. We will have a success. Then uh, the transaction is performed successfully. We are, we are doing with the data as we did, and we can now get the next transaction and um, process that. However, we can have two types of, er of errors. We can have a business rule exception or a system error. The business rule exception, that is, that say that something is wrong with the data. Like, let's say that all our invoices that we want to process, got, we, we wanted uh, to have five numbers in the file name, and suddenly one of them got six numbers in, and then that will be a business rule exception. So that's not, we haven't done anything wrong with the workflow, it's just the data that's uh, wrong with it. Or, we can have an error that is um, like something went wrong with the, hard, uh, the software for example it could be that uh, something didn't work out right 
and that will be an error. And what we'll do here is that we'll um, is that we will go to initialization again and load everything uh, again and uh, go from there. So um, yeah, that's the overall um, intuition behind the reframework. However, there's much more to it. We will go into detail about every uh, state and every transition one by one, so you can learn it all. And after that, we will look at how we can tweak the reframework. So that's it for now. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. And otherwise, or in both cases, have a very good day. Bye-bye.